Hello, everyone. Hey, how you doing out there? I am Steve Harper, a writer, actor, certified creativity coach uh, for yourcreativelife.com. And welcome to the Creative Expression Session. Uh, and this is, today we're gonna talk about how to take a meeting. And uh, there's a Q&A feature here in, uh, if you're watching on uh, Google Hangout, which obviously you are, or you might be watching on YouTube if this is after the fact. But if you're on with uh, Google Hangout, you can actually put your questions, if you have them, in the questions feature over there on the side, and I encourage you to do that, because there will be time for questions at the end. But in any case, welcome to, uh, to, how, to um, how to take a meeting. And we're gonna talk a lot about, uh, a lot about that and what that means and, and how it works. And you know, I want you to know that I'm a, an actor, writer, producer, certified creativity coach, which uh, from yourcreativelife.com, and you can find more information about just about everything I talk about and, uh, and having a good, balanced, organized, focused, joyful writing life on my website at yourcreativelife.com. So definitely go there, check out other articles and videos uh, if you enjoy it. I live in Los Angeles, and right now in Hollywood, there is, we're in the process of taking meetings. And that's all about this thing that we call staffing season, which is gearing up, which is the time for TV writers where people get uh, new jobs or try to get new jobs. And so that's what this is sort of all about. So there are many writers like me who are reading scripts and going and meeting with people and talking about the possibility of working for them. And you might think that if you're personal, personable, and intelligent and articulate and open-hearted, that that's all you need, right? You might think that that's all you need. Uh, and that's certainly what I thought back in the day. Now, I, you know, I've spent a couple of decades in my life as an actor, and I hosted a kid's show once, and I went to a couple of Ivy League schools, and I can, uh, you know, I'm really friendly and personable. And I thought, hey, what else would I need for meetings, right? But that's actually not the case. I found out that I didn't know what I needed to need, needed to know, and, and that changed. So here's what happened with me. Uh, when I was living in New York, before I lived in Los Angeles, I would come out to LA every year for one week, and I would take a bunch of TV meetings. So that was like 15 meetings would get scheduled in a week. So I was meeting with three people a day at all sorts of studios and networks and production companies. It felt really cool, and I thought I was doing really well by being friendly, personable, articulate, all that stuff. But I didn't realize how much I was missing until I moved to Los Angeles and got into the CBS Writers Mentoring Program. Now that program is, uh, it's a training program for writers of color, uh, specifically at CBS, uh, that lasts uh, somewhere between six and eight months. And during that time, I really learned what it meant and what it means to take a meeting. And I had no idea before that. Now, you know, I'd spent years doing it the wrong way, but now, Knowing what I know, which I'm going to pass out on to you in the next, within the next 30 minutes and also have room to take your questions, I've learned that for me, taking a meeting involves five steps. And you can certainly take notes if you want, but of course this video is also going to be on YouTube so you can watch it over and over again if you want to do that too. But here's the thing. Five steps to taking a meeting, right? The first one is preparation and research. The second one is what I call strategy setup. The third one is show up and execute. The fourth one is follow up. And the fifth one is keep in touch. Preparation and research, strategy set up, show up and execute, follow up, keep in touch. Those are the five steps. Now, let's start, let's jump right in and start with preparation and research. And again, if you have questions, there'll be time for that in the end. And if you're on Google Chat, you can put questions in the question feature over there uh, in the Google Hangout window. So one thing we know about modern life is that everybody can be found online somewhere, right? You can find tidbits and information if you Google people uh, anywhere you look. And so the opportunity here in terms of the preparation and research is to really go the extra mile to find out key information about the people you're meeting with. It's just common sense, right? Well, apparently not to everyone. I've heard TV executives say more than once, that there are people who show up and come to meet with them without any idea of what it is they do. What shows they produce, what the flavor of those shows are, all of that stuff. You know, in fact, 
Uh, I've also heard, you know, I'm a playwright as well as a TV writer and an actor and a producer and a creativity coach. And in my playwriting life, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, playwrights are all in vogue in Hollywood. But I've heard executives say that some playwrights have walked into their offices, sat down to have a meeting and proudly said to them, yeah, you know, I don't watch TV. So now that is just not a good thing. Like you don't want to say that to a TV executive that you don't watch TV. It's not a mark of pride. It's actually kind of ridiculous to go into somebody's office and say that sort of thing. It's not good. And so the research then becomes super important in terms of knowing what it is that people do before the interview. So ask yourself these questions. Who am I meeting with? Uh, and can I find articles about them on the internet or about their company on the internet? You know, are there podcasts where this person has been interviewed? Uh, and there are these video podcasts, obviously, and an audio podcast. You can find out all sorts of information by researching people online. And finally, can I find a profile for this person I'm meeting with on Facebook or Twitter? Now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of people out there poo-poo Facebook and Twitter as just, you know, ridiculous sort of silly, trivial things uh, that are part of our, you know, part of the modern contrivance. But the truth is that Facebook and Twitter can give you some key information. I've discovered, uh, for example, mutual friends that I have with somebody on Facebook. So, it, and, and having mutual friends with somebody is a great topic of conversation. So just think about it. If I'm meeting with a big executive and I put them into Facebook, I don't need to friend them. I'm not gonna stalk them in any way. But if I see that they have, we have three mutual friends, what a great place to start a topic of conversation when I walk into a room with somebody I've never seen before. Hey, you know, I know that we know blah, blah, blah together. I went to school with him or her. I was in this job with him or her, right? What a great place to start a real conversation. Now, here's a story about how I learned to get really good information off of Twitter. Here's an example. So in the CBS Writers Mentoring Program, um, we were, uh, the general idea is that you're, we, we hope to get assigned to sit in a writer's room and observe, right? So I was, I was assigned to sit in a writer's room and what they, what they do is CBS goes to showrunners and they say to them, you know, we'd like you to sit with a writer, uh, this potential writer, like a little bit before sitting in your writer's room, sit in your writer's room for a little bit and then sit with the writer, uh, potential writer, a little bit afterwards. So now, the, the thing about that that you can recognize is it's really vague. So if a showrunner thinks, oh, this person's toxic, the showrunner can be like, well, I'll talk with you for five minutes, and then we'll sit in the room for 30 minutes, and I'll talk to you for five more minutes, and I'll send you on your way, right? So, so it's, it's particularly geared to be uh, vague in that way. But knowing that, I wanted to maximize my opportunity to really meet with this showrunner person going into his room. And here's what I did. So I went online and, uh, and I, found, um, I found some stuff on the internet about this person. I looked up his IMDb stuff. I watched some shows that he had created. Uh, and uh, I looked on Facebook. He wasn't there. There were no mutual friends, nothing like that that I could use. And then I decided to go to Twitter, and Twitter really was my last choice, because I was sort of like, okay, well, Twitter's not going to give me much. And I looked through his Twitter feed, and for the most part, it was what you would expect. There were a lot of like things about the show, like watch this, things about actors, uh, some, some trivial things about the news. And then somewhere along the line, somewhere like eight or 12 months like from you know, back, I found this one link to this micro-lending site. And it's a site that, uh, where you can lend money to people in third world countries who want to start businesses or want to keep their lives going or are having issues with their mortgage or whatever, right? So I thought, oh, that's really interesting. And I clicked on that and I went to the site and I looked at it and I thought it was really cool and I signed up and I donated. So when I went to meet with this showrunner, you know, we had a pretty good conversation. It was me and his co-EP and we talked about my writing and their show and stuff like that. But when I mentioned this micro lending site that I saw on his Twitter feed that I really related to and really dug, the meeting changed. The energy and flavor of the meeting changed because suddenly I was talking about something that he was really connected to and really interested in that had a social significance, right? So think about that. Like rather than just some sort of generic conversation, I was suddenly really relating to this guy on a level that he perhaps did not expect. So that, the moral of that story, oh, and, and then, then of course, then the, the better moral of the story is, 
I got to spend an, at least an hour with him before I went into the meeting. I got to sit in the writer's room for an entire day. I got invited back to sit in the writer's room for a second day. And I also had a really good conversation with him after I sat in the writer's room. So I felt like my preparation paid off in terms of really knowing who I was meeting with. So the moral of the story is anything you can glean from Facebook, from the web, from interviews, from Twitter, uh, from IMDB, anything you can glean to start a conversation and make an impression and make a connection is a valuable thing, right? That's the opportunity to separate you from the crowd because they're meeting with a ton of people, right? So if everybody just comes in and is like, oh yeah, you know, I love your show, blah, 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 right? And you come in and say, hey, I heard that you supported this cause that I'm also really interested in. You can see how immediately you're having a different conversation relating to the person in that way. So it's really important. The other thing is, of course, if the person's a writer that you're meeting with or produces something and it's a TV show, you want to do your best to watch every single episode or every episode you can about that particular show so that you can begin to, on some small level, know their work as, you know, in some fraction as intimately as they do. Because that's what they live. They eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff. So why not you know, catch up to that just a little bit by helping yourself in your preparation? Um, yeah, the other thing that I do, which is also interesting in terms of preparation, that I really encourage you to do is, I will not only look the person up, but I'll see if I can find a photo. And some, sometimes on IMDb, writers don't want to put photos up, but you can probably Google somebody and find a photo. Here's the reason I do that. If the person is, has a very strange overbite or is incredibly good looking, like, I want to get used to that before I go into the room, so I'm not spending all my time in the room going, wow, what a, what a strange overbite. And oh, how incredibly beautiful you are, right? I won't waste my time doing that because I've already had ample time staring at that person on the wall of my office before I went in. So if you can do that, I also think that that's another great piece of preparation before you go into a meeting. So, so that's all the preparation portion of our program. That's step number one. Step number two is strategy setup. So now here's where you figure out what you're gonna do in the meeting, right? And there are, there are a few categories here too. One is me talking about myself, right? Which will probably be required because many of these meetings start with, hey, tell me about yourself, right? Two, talking about the executive and the company, right? Or three, talking about the material. So. How do you talk about yourself? <laughs> That's the big question. And actually one of the things that we worked on at the CBS Writers Mentoring Program, which I think is so brilliant, which I owe it all to Carol Kirshner, who runs the program and is a pretty brilliant uh, career strategist in terms of the industry. She, she invited us, I was gonna say forced, but she invited us to create a personal log line, right? Basically a one sentence piece that says something really juicy about who I am in the world and is sort of enticing and fun, right? So, so we have the personal log line, and then she would also talk about coming up with several B stories or C stories that might connect directly to the person I'm, I'm meeting with, right? If I'm meeting on a sci-fi show, I might have a sci-fi story that relates to my life that sort of brings my personality and energy into the room. If it's a crime show, I might have a similar thing, right? You get the idea. So, about me, these days, there are several things that I talk about, several stories that I talk about in terms of myself. I'm not gonna give you the examples, but I'm gonna give you the categories so that you can fashion your own. One is, there's the story I tell about why I write what I write. And I believe that everyone out there has that particular story that may be about a childhood experience or somebody they met or something they read or something traumatic or something hopeful or something lovely. It's a personal story that's about why I write what I write. Okay, number two is there's the story about my philosophy of television because I definitely have one about what kinds of shows there are and why. So that's another story that I tell. There is the log line about my background, which goes back to what Carol Kirshner encouraged us to do. And then there's a B story, as I mentioned before, that, that relates directly to this particular genre or this particular network or the company, right? So I write those out on paper. I list them out on paper. And that's my preparation to talk about me. Number two is about the executive. So I choose a few facts from my research, having looked that person up wherever I have, and I choose a few facts that I wanna hit. And now these are specifically facts uh, that I really wanna know about the person I'm meeting with. 
Maybe it's something about their background. Maybe we both come from New York. Maybe I know they were a Boy Scout and I was a Boy Scout. I don't know, right? But whatever it is, I bookmark it. And then in the meeting, I'm going to mention it in a casual, relaxed way, right? It's not going to be an interview, like in a rat-a-tat-tat sense. It's going to be, hey, you know, I heard this thing or I saw online or, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to introduce it in a casual way. And the important thing in this piece is that it reflects an actual interest in what I want to know about this person, right? So think about it. It's sort of like politicians do in debates, which we've all seen. Somebody asks them about the environment and they end up talking about the military because the military is really what they wanted to talk about. So they hit the environment a little bit and then they go to the military piece, right? So it's really just about making sure you're going to get to where you want to get to the thing you really want to talk to, the thing you really want to know about this executive or this company that you know from your research that you want to know. Lastly, uh, in this category at least, in terms of strategy setup, there's about the material, right? So now I pick something about an episode that I saw or something I read that, that uh, you know, there might be something that tells me about what the company stands for energetically or there might be a specific moment from the script, right? And what I try to do is I try to make a visceral connection with the material. So hear that, a visceral connection with the material. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that 99.9% .9 of the people who go into these meetings, they're gonna say something like, hey, your script was really good. It was good, really good. Oh, so good, right? But if I can come in and say, rather than saying so good, if I can come in and say, you know, the character of Tom reminded me of my cousin from uh, Australia who died in a car accident a year ago. And, you know, I really miss him, my cousin. And the energy of your character, Tom, really reminded me of my cousin. It made me feel like I was in the room with him and I kind of knew what he, he, wanted, he was going to do. And none of those things that he did were a surprise because I really related to it. And, you know, it was really deep. And I felt like I knew him and I knew the world of your show. So think about it. Think about it. What you're really saying to this person who wrote this script is not just like, oh, it was nice, but you're saying, I viscerally relate. My soul, my history, my life connects to your material, right? And then by extension, what you're saying is, so I'm a great guy to have in the room because I already connect to the material. I could write this character because I understand him. I understand the world. I understand you. How much better is it to come across in that way about the material than to just say, oh, it's great, which 99.9% .9 of the other people are doing, right? You want to separate yourself from the pack by talking about something that is so resonant in your life that it can't be ignored and that you'll be remembered, right? So that's the piece. Right? And once you've laid out that strategy, those things that I talked about, talking about you, talking about the executive or the company, talking about the material, then you want to practice that. You want to run through those things at home, laying them out casually, pretending you're in conversation. You, know, you want to just really get really clear about how you're going to put those stories forth and what you're going to do and what you're going to say about how that unfolds. Right? Just give yourself a little practice so you have some experience going through that. Then. Once you do that, once you have all of those elements ready to go, then you're going to be ready to do what I call surfing the meeting, right? So what does that mean, surfing the meeting? It essentially means this. When I was at the CBS Writers Mentoring Program, which, wow, I'm mentioning that a lot. I guess it was a se seminal experience. Uh, but when I was in the program, we would have these people who came in, executives, showrunners, writers, they'd come in every week and they'd do these mock interviews with us. And what I, what I figured out is that there were three kinds of interviews that people that I was observing, right? One of them was an interview where all they want to do is hear about me. All they want to do is hear about you. You know, tell me about yourself. And then they sit there, right? So there's that kind of meeting. The next kind of meeting is where all they want to do is to talk about you, you to talk about them. So what'd you think of my script? What'd you think of my blog? What'd you think of my, uh, what do you think of, you know, Fox? What do you think of this company? Right? So all they want to do is hear about them. And the third thing is where all they want to hear about is the material, you know? So what'd you think about the pilot? And they stare at you, right? So, so bottom line is you want to be prepared to step into a meeting 
that is any one of those meetings, right, where you're prepared to talk about you, where you're prepared to talk about them and their history and what you know about them and the podcast you listened to and the interview you saw or whatever it is, and where you're prepared to talk about the material. This scene was really resonant, and I really loved this and that moment. And that, you know, You've got to be prepared to talk about all three of those things, prepared for all three of those kinds of meetings, and then to do what I call surfing the meeting, which is be able to, you know, bob and weave with the experience, right? Being able to say like, okay, now we're talking about me, I'll talk about me. Now we're talking about the material, I'll do that. Now we're talking about you, with, you know. So just to be prepared to surf the meeting with all the great and juicy information you have, right? So you've got to be pre prepped, prepped, for any one of those meetings. Uh, and you've got to show up in a way that allows you to move gently, easily, and joyfully from one to the other. Now, how do you do that? I think you do that, uh, you do that by hitting your points. And so that goes to step three, uh, show up and execute, right? So, so we've talked about step one, which was preparation and research. Step two, which is strategy setup, which is all about what am I going to do when I'm in the room? And now step three, which is show up and execute. So be on time is the first thing. Or early. There are executives and, in fact, people I've worked for who have said to me that anybody who shows up late, automatically out. They'll meet with you out of courtesy, but they'll know in their head, you know what? Nah, I don't deal with late. So you want to be early. And that means adding extra time to your commute to wherever you're going, because sometimes if you've done this before, or even if you haven't, or if you're going to a job interview or whatever, you might have to go to the parking garage, and then you might have to walk 10 minutes, and then where's the office, on the lot, and blah, blah, blah. So you want to show up early so that you can really be on time for the meeting. So show up early. It really counts. Then uh, be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared to be yourself, right? Uh, now you've got your bullet points at the tip of your fingers, so I really recommend you, you know, before I go to every meeting, I'll make a list. You know what? I want to hit these five things. I want to hit this thing about me. I want to tell that story about me. I want to tell these two stories about the material. I want to talk about this. I want to ask about this with the executive and this about the company. And I go in with that list in my head. Sometimes I'll write it on a piece of paper. I'll keep glancing at it when I'm in the car. Then when I get to the meeting, I'm like, okay, those are my five, six things that I want to hit. So hitting you the points on your list, is basically the only concrete way to find out if you're doing what you intended to do in the meeting. That's the only concrete way. It's like being an actor and knowing, okay, in this scene I do these things, and if I say these lines and I applaud, you know, it's the only way. You can't judge by the audience. You don't know if they're gonna laugh or applaud or love you or jump up and down or hug you or whatever, but you can know if you hit your points. So that's, I really recommend having that list, that checklist when you go into each meeting and making sure you hit those points, right? Uh, so that's when you know and can trust that you've done what you can do. That's step three, show up and execute. Step four is follow up. Follow up. Now, this is a step uh, that involves checking in with your reps. If you have an agent or manager or lawyer or whatever, and trying to see, well, how did I do? What's the feedback, if that's possible? But also, and this is really, really, really key, if you remember nothing else from this seminar, this workshop, this creative expression session. Uh, I hope you remember this, and that is write a thank you note. Write a thank you note, right? Now, why do I say that? Thank you notes make a huge difference. Now, think about it again. Your job is to separate you from the pack. And I know that everybody out there and his brother and sister are sending emails that say, hey, thanks for the meeting, and that's great. But if you're gonna send an email, I recommend you send an email and a note, right? Send that email and say, thanks for the meeting, it was so great to meet you, and I just, I, I really wanted to thank you right away, but I'm also dropping a note in the mail. Who doesn't love a note, right? Who doesn't love mail? Who's not going to open it and then remember you fondly again? It's such a win, 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 win. Send a thank you note, and if you don't know the person's address, but you're meeting with a writer, I'm not actually sure they still do this, although you could check it out. Until recently, and they may still do it, I'm not sure, the Writers Guild will forward mail to any writer. If you send you know, this writer in care of the Writers Guild, they'll send it to the writer's house. So mail, and again, we have, you'll have to check to see if that's still true, but uh, somebody get back to me and let me know if it is or not. But uh, mail can go directly to that person's house. 
right? And again, they'd open the card, they'd remember you, they, rem they see you now, they get the email, they remember you in an hour, they get the card, they remember you in a week, do it. It'll really separate you from the pack. All right, so that's the follow-up thing. And last is keep in touch. So here's the deal. You know how your relatives say they really wanna hear from you and your parents and your niece and your sister in Nebraska? It, the same thing goes for executives. They want to hear from you. Now, you don't want to inundate them with stuff. You don't want to be a stalker. You're not going to knock on their door or be there every day or whatever. But keeping in touch, you know, every so often, it's as appropriate, is really useful to drop them an email. And a great, here's a great way to do it. And so many people get really freaked out by this. But a great way to do it is, you know, they've done something cool and you see it in the press and you send them a note. Hey, I read on deadline that you blah, 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 congratulations. Hey, congratulations on the pickup of your, of your show. Hey, I, I heard that you supported this charity, how great, right? Any way that you can begin to make connections or hey, I saw this article and I thought of you, right? And so to give them a few little boosts of like thinking about you, can we get together, coffee, whatever, like that sort of thing, really useful down the line. It separates you from the pack, so do it. So those are the steps. Preparation and research, strategy setup, show up and execute, follow up, keep in touch. Five steps that you can use today to make a difference in how you take meetings. So questions, what are your questions? There's a question feature on, uh, that, that's here in, uh, in the Google Hangout. You can type your questions in there. Let me know what they are. You can also send me any questions or thoughts you have at coachsteve at yourcreativelife.com, coachsteve at yourcreativelife.com. And we are about to run out of time here, but I want to hit a few questions that I thought you might have uh, in case you didn't have questions, because this is my checklist, the kind of thing I talked about doing in meetings I did just for this call. So here's the thing. Here's one of the questions I thought you might have, that a lot of people have, is thank you notes, really? Isn't that too much? Now, the answer is not in my experience. Uh, getting mail is like getting a gift, and who doesn't love gifts, right? Something addressed to you with your name on it. Uh, also, I think if it's too much, you'll find that out. The person will send you a note or tell your agent or whatever and be like, you know what, I don't really love the, don't really love the thank you notes, but I've never experienced that. I think everybody loves a thank you note. Another question that I thought you might have that I've heard from other people uh, who I've coached and who I've talked to is, I don't know how to talk about myself. What do, what do I, how do I do that, right? So here's a, here's a down and dirty quick way to do it. Make a list of who you are, stories from your life, you know, things you remember. Choose the juiciest ones of those, and then practice. Practice telling that story with a friend, with a coach, with your mom, with your sister, with somebody in the industry, and just begin to get good at it. Find out what stories about you roll off the tongue that are unique and heartfelt and interesting. It's a great way to discover what, how to talk about yourself. Last question that I thought you might have, and then we'll wrap it all up. How often should I keep in touch is the question. It's a good question. You know, there's really no formula for that. Um, you, as I said before, you don't want to be stalker-like, uh, but maybe once every six months might be good, you know, to drop somebody a note, uh, to stay on the radar, because that's really what it's all about, right? People are meeting with people all the time. So you don't want two years to go by before you send, you go like, hey, how you doing, right? Because then they'll be like, wait, do I know you? So keep in touch in a way that works for you. You know, once every six months is probably a reasonable way to do it. Uh, and if you can do it a little more often and not feel like a stalker, I say go for it. So I want to mention that all of the things that we talked about today in terms of taking meetings is part of a, a workshop I teach that's uh, basically like, it's, it's a business workshop for writers. It's one of the five workshops that I teach that you can find on yourcreativelife.com. And I teach them every now and then, uh, so there's no regular schedule, but certainly um, those, the information here is valuable and is present and is possible to be shared with large groups. And uh, look out for the next time I, I do the, the, the creative business workshop and you'll get these tips and others about how to run your creative career. Uh, and I also do, as you can see on the website, script consulting and individualized coaching and email coaching uh, and all sorts of fun things that I think are really helpful and essential to helping writers like you 
make the most of your creative life because that's really what it's all about. It's about sharing uh, what I've learned so that we can make the world a better place by sharing our art in a good, grounded, loving, supportive, dynamic, interesting, artistic way. That's really what it's all about. So you can find more information on yourcreativelife.com. You can email me with questions at any time at coachsteve at yourcreativelife.com and uh, find articles, videos, and uh, blog information, all that stuff. And you can find me on Twitter as well. And uh, you know, most of all, I wish you fantastic and wonderful creative adventures. Happy writing, and uh, I hope to see you soon. And thanks for joining us today. Oh, and catch this on YouTube, and you can watch it over again if you like. Have a great day.